Bill Lee is chief economist at the Milken Institute, and Stephen DiNicolo is portfolio manager at Federated Hermes. Uh, welcome both uh, to both of you. Bill, let me start with you. Did you hear anything out of the interview between Mr. Rubenstein and, and uh, uh, Chair Powell that surprised you in any way? I thought the, the first question was an interesting one. If you'd known what the jobs report said <laughs> on Wednesday, would you have done the same thing? What I really liked about Chair Powell's answer is that he really clarified something that the markets really didn't believe, which is that the Chair Powell has a dovish tilt toward data. I mean, the Fed has always said we're data dependent, but Mark's always assuming that he's going to chicken out when the unemployment rate starts to go bad. It's going to it's going to start to get these guys to pivot and, and lower their rates. And I think he made it very clear that we are going to be even handed. And I think one of the things that the Fed has really failed to do over time has been to explain how it is that they make decisions and how they approach the data as they receive it. How do they interpret the data? And, and, and not having a reference point is something that's really hurt the Fed. And I think today's speech has really made it very clear that the Fed is even-handed. They're not going to have a dovish bias, and they're not going to have a hawkish bias. Stephen, he, he did seem to say that, that what the jobs report showed was a confirmation of what the Fed did. In other words, that, the, that right. the, the jobs report was strong enough to keep doing what they're doing, keep moving interest rates higher. He was hesitant. He bobbed and weaved like uh, Muhammad Ali on the question of, do you have a, an unemployment rate in mind right. in the same way that you have a fixed number in mind for what inflation should be? Right. Look, I thought it was a great interview, and it was interesting to watch the market spike as he was talking, and people were laughing in the audience. And I think it was nervous laughter, and maybe people thought he was saying something new or something more dovish. But in reality, it was the same thing. I mean, look, looking over at the overall macro right now, the landscape is clearly muddied and fluid surrounding the Fed's next move. And more importantly, the next step change in EPS growth up or down. Powell was saying today, deflation has begun but it will be bumpy and rates will remain high. Everything is just getting started. He also said, which I thought was important, he said he's not looking to surprise people. So I think the base case is let's take Powell's word for it right now and invest from there. The one thing, Tyler, is that supply-driven inflation, I think, will be stickier than people expect. And we're already seeing operating margins contract in many companies, but it used to be that the cure for high prices was high prices and new supply would come pouring in. But that's just not the case anymore. And Powell said, we expect deflation in housing. And obviously you're starting to see that, but let's take a look at, look, I look at companies for a living. Let's take a look at a company like Eagle Materials, the ticker's EXP. They make cement and wallboard, very cyclical, very commodity driven materials. There is no such thing as a new wallboard facility in the US today. There is no such thing as a new supplant a cement plant today. And so you're not going to see the supply-driven um, move here, and it's going to have to come from demand and lower demand. And I think that's what Powell is waiting for. Bill, do you agree with that? And how does this boil down for stock investors? Do you think they're no. uh, heading into a, a bear market trap, so to speak, or is this the start of a, of a rally that can be sustainable? The stickiest part of the inflation that the Fed is worried about and investors should worry about is the service sector X uh, housing. And, and Chair Powell has made it very clear. Yes, demand is very strong because people really want to buy these services. And as Steve just said, we, we don't have the supply coming up because we don't have the labor coming into these sectors to give us the extra supply. Look at the, red, the lines outside of restaurants that you see it in New York and, and all the major cities and the, the lines lining up for airplane tickets where there aren't enough pilots. So the supply side will be very sticky. But I think Chair Powell has made it very clear. We're going to stay tight until we see the, the, the service sector inflation start to come back down again, because that's the one we're most afraid of taking off and, and kicking off a wage price spiral of the 1980s and 70s style that we, we had such a hard time getting rid of. And so for investors, we should expect the Fed to stay tight and then perhaps even go beyond five, five and a half percent if those core uh, prices remain recalcitrant.